I think about this issue based on my background as a physician, but more importantly as um, the former chief medical officer for Sacramento County, who's in charge of the, the public health delivery system there, and as um, a faculty member in my last home institution was the University of California Davis um, School of Medicine. The reason why I, I give that background is last night it became personal for me because it's hitting close to home. Um, we f the, the first novel coronavirus case of potentially person-to-person um, -person non um, transmission um, is in Sacramento County as we speak. It, it, that, that patient is housed at UC Davis and you know, I've been in, in communication with my former colleagues that, that are over there. There are a couple concerning issues that, you know, as we go through the, the hearing, I'm going to want to ask questions about. But, you know, if I think about this particular case, it initially arose in Solano County, um, which is close to where Travis Air, Air Force Base is, one of the points of entry where we're um, quarantining patients as we evacuate them from, from overseas. Um, thus far, we don't know of... Uh, this patient did not have any, any travel history and we're not aware of any contact tracing. Um, that work continues. The patient arrived at, at UC Davis um, last Wednesday or, or Thursday, um, was intubated at the time and on, on a ventilator. Um, at that juncture, you know, the, the, the doctors at UC Davis and the medical staff did not have a concrete diagnosis and had requested um, testing for coronavirus. It was determined that this patient um, did not fit the criteria for testing of coronavirus. Um, this past Sunday, the doctors and the medical staff insisted on the test. A test was performed. Um, last night, we got the, the results back and, and the news that, that all of you have heard. Um, this is the first patient testing positive where we don't have um, confident contact tracing. One thing that I will want to talk about, and you know, perhaps with, with Dr. Redfield when, when we do our questioning, is the testing cri criteria. Um, also, um, the rapidity of getting testing capabilities quickly to, to every state um, and the distribution of, of test kits. You know, I was chatting with the, um, the ambassador from Korea earlier today. Korea is testing 15,000 people a day right now. So, you know, whatever we can do to assist, um, you know, our scientists to, to get testing capabilities up and running as quickly as possible. Um, you know, there's a couple areas that I would like to focus on in this hearing as, as well. I do applaud um, President Trump, although I think it was delayed in announcing and, and identifying someone as, as the, the head. He didn't use the term czar, but I'll use that term. Um, who's the, the focus point to work across the interagency and who has direct access to the president and, and Vice President Trump. That said, I, I really do want to applaud Dr. Brix's um, appointment announcement. Very well qualified and I think um, you know, has our support. I also appreciate the administration's funding flexibility. Um, I did think the initial amount of $2.5 billion was uh, not going to be sufficient. I know the Senate suggested $8.5 billion. That may not be enough. And I think you know, for this body in a bipartisan way, we should just be ready to make sure um, our scientists and the folks that are on the front line, particularly the folks that are um, in public health systems and hospitals on the front line have the resources and support. Our number one job is protecting um, domestic national security. And at this juncture, while we don't know this rapidly evolving um, public health threat, we've got to be ready to make sure that our, our communities, our public health infrastructure, and our global health leadership has the, the funds and the ability to do their job. Um, in addition, you know, as we are thinking about the dollar amount to to appropriate, we have to do a quick assessment of public health infrastructure um, and assess the needs as well as the, the gaps. You know, having um, been in charge of a public health system in a large county, um, I know we run on shoestrings and our infrastructure in a bad flu season would overwhelm our hospitals and emergency room capabilities, slap on potentially what we don't know how bad coronavirus will, will get. We just have to be prepared for the worst and, and hope for, for the best here. I also um, want to make sure and, and, you know, talked about this with some of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle earlier this morning. We need to keep politics out of this. This has to be, you know, a, a nonpartisan effort. This has to be about looking at the science, 
following the facts and doing what we have to do to keep the American public safe, but then also to, to, to focus in on the international community. That's going to be extremely important. In addition, we have to um, make sure, you know, in this era where, you know, it's easy to put out false information, um, we do have a very concerned public. We're all leaders as members of Congress um, and have the ability to communicate effectively. So the more we can coordinate with the CDC and others to get accurate information out there to make sure the public is accurately informed and that um, we can quickly dispel any misinformation will, will allow us to do our jobs and allow you to do your jobs um, and our scientists to do their jobs better. And lastly, this is the Foreign Affairs Committee, and you know, global health security is um, something that we look very closely at. And you know, in this sense, American leadership has to be um, central to how we approach this in a, in a global aspect. So Dr. Redfield, I'll, I'll be curious to get an update on how um, our scientists are doing, our CDC workers are doing in China, in the, the hot zone, if they've accommodated our workers. And we've got to have an international response, um, everyone working together in a transparent way, sharing information so we can uh, get ahead of this. So again, I appreciate the, the witnesses for taking their, their time to come down here to inform us as members of Congress, but also to inform the, the general public on you know, what is rapidly evolving here. And again, appreciate the members that are here. And with that, let me turn it over to Ranking Member Mr. 